Hello Targa friends, hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it's time for another Orc Mode workout. And today was Max Effort Bench Press Day. You guys know the rules, reach down and click like before you watch the max attempt. Help keep the likes higher than the dislikes. Um, today I didn't get as good of a lift as I thought I would get. I'm pretty fatigued at this point. Uh, I'm getting ready to deload and I'm doing a lot of volume for my upper body. Now, ironically, the lift felt really, really good. Like, I got up to 315 with slightly less chains than I did the last time I did chains with 315. And I thought I was going to be able to go higher. Like, based off of this, like the 295, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go past 315. Uh, no doubt in my mind. I got up to the 315 and exploded off the chest. And right at the lockout, it got really hard. I locked it, but I realized, you know what? Um, if I go up again, I'm probably going to miss it definitely above 90 percent it'll count as a training max but interestingly for me i felt it really really in my pecs and i think it's because it once i start hitting above 315 off the bottom with a pause i'm definitely getting more pec activation but the bar path itself and and at the very least the not so much the bar path but the deceleration would suggest that it's my delt still we know my delts visually are weakness. Uh, people would say triceps, but right there it slowed. And then I locked it. But we were almost at the full amount of chains at that point. Almost at full chains. There's past 30 pounds of chains there. Uh, then it slowed. But I didn't feel any tricep or delt. Delt all chest. On a side note, my shoulders felt really good today. So all the mobility work seems to be helping. Uh, there was no popping or anything or discomfort at all today in my left shoulder, the one that had started bothering me from the wider grip benching. And I decided, you know, I want to mess a little bit with the football bar because I want to do stuff that's going to be really easy on my shoulders that will still build everything up. So I had played around with this because I'm like, well, let me make sure my chest gets worked. I want to make sure I get a lot of chest activation on my floor press. And I found with the football bar when I started tinkering with it next... I didn't feel anything in my shoulder. It felt really good with the wide grip. This is the widest grip I've ever used in a long time because I can't grip this wide on a barbell. Um, it's just uncomfortable and my shoulder irritates it. But with that football bar, it felt really good. And I mean, I felt nothing at all anywhere in my shoulder. Got a good pump in my chest. And when I got to the last set, I cranked out 12 reps. Now this is only 225. And I've been doing like seven pounds more than that on my normal floor press. But 12 reps on the final set, which means I'm going to be able to go ahead and load this up. Felt comfortable. And again, widest pressing I've been able to do. Now, this could possibly build everything up that I need. I'm still going to be benching close and medium grip unless somehow I can comfortably do wider. But this was comfortable. And it makes sense when we look at the, the shoulder angles involved. Makes sense. Felt good. And like I said, I really, really felt a tremendous amount of chest. Now, obviously my pecs need to grow to bring my bench up. But a lot of people were saying, Jason, I mean, your chest is pretty big. It's really your delts and triceps. And we, we know. We know structurally and from my different bar paths. My delts are really tremendously holding my bench back. But also a lot of it has to do with being able to hold my hands where I want them, building my forearms up a lot more, my arms in general. Uh, but I've also got heavier wrist wraps on the way. Um, I'm going to use a lot longer wrist wraps. I'm going to wrap everything up tighter because I have really small wrists. I have small forearm bones in terms of, of diameter. I need as much support as I can get there, honestly, while I continue to strengthen that up. And I feel like that will improve my bench a lot on top of the other stuff. And it's coming, guys. It's going to take a bit. I'm having to fine-tune this, just like we did with the squat, just like the deadlift. And, I mean, people have been pretty shocked uh, at how they've come up. And the bench hasn't quite caught up. But we know what the weak links are, and we have to work on all of it. The issue with a lot of it is, is an issue of hypertrophy, building these muscles up. And it's going to take a little time. I will get there. But we're going to have to be more patient. You're going to have to be more patient. Unless I want to blast a bunch of gear to just blow my delts and everything up quick. It's going to take some time, guys. But I'm going to be patient. I mean, I'm going to, it's going to be a hard fight this year. The other stuff's going to be easier. 
you know, I, I feel like at this point, my deadlift goal will probably come first, right? Squat second, bench last. Because what are the goals for the year? 650 deadlift, 600 squat, 375 bench. Now, a lot of people are laughing. There's guys out here benching 400 who are like, that's a crazy ratio. I'll never squat 600. Them personally. But it's like, but you're not built like me. You're built to bench. I built to squat. Not built to bench. So we've got a lot of muscles to build up. So I decided, you know, instead of incline, let's just go with a bunch of overhead pressing today. I got plenty of chest activation from that floor pressing. And I'm going to mess with that one for a little while. Uh, I feel like that's enough to really handle most of my pec growth. And I really want to blow up my whole shoulder girdle and triceps. And I've really got to work on them. And the axle bar is really comfortable. I'm really happy with the way it feels. Kill several birds with one stone. And it will hit the upper chest because I do lay back quite a bit. The bottom, we're getting upper chest. I really want to focus on this for my volume for now. Really want to focus on this. We can get most of my chest activation off the floor pressing. Especially with that wide grip. That wide grip. Like, I seem to really hit the spot, finding that sweet spot. I'm going to mess with that for a bit. And I can honestly say, after all of today's training, my shoulder joint feels phenomenal. No irritation. So I think we're kind of getting in the groove with the right lifts uh, to grow and everything and keep that in check. I got more reps in general today on the overhead pressing, too. That tells me that my shoulders are growing. We got like between 12 and 15 reps on every set with this today instead of just getting like 12 and then 13. So we picked up more reps total for five sets. More total reps. Same thing when I got to the laterals. I think I got like 25 on my first set and then like 26 on the second instead of like 22, 23. So if two of my, my two shoulder exercises, the reps are going up for my limit sets with the same weights, we're probably growing, especially when both of them in the same workout. They're both going up in the same workout. We definitely are probably getting some hypertrophy. So we need to keep moving forward with that. Because if my shoulders get bigger, my bench will go up. My triceps get bigger, my bench will go up. And I'm definitely going to keep hammering the triceps. Why? Well, we know I need bigger arms, number one. Number two, when we see those chain lifts and stuff like that to where they just stop right at the very top, even though I don't feel anything in my triceps, we know when it's the last five inches of the lockout like that, there has to be a tricep weakness. Even if I don't feel it, it has to be there. So if I can bring my triceps up and I can start locking heavier lifts on all those supplemental lifts, the assistance exercises I max on like that, my bench will go up. If I get stronger at those, then we know the bench will go up. And I know to a lot of people that sounds backwards, but it works very, very well. We work on the weak links for all of our supplemental lifts because we know those supplemental lifts are indicative of bench increases. And the floor pressing, especially that wider grip, will build the bottom of my bench anyways. Also doing the strict standing presses will build the bottom and mid-range. I'm not worried about it. Build everything. But we've got to hypertrophy all these muscles. All of these muscles while still doing the various max work. So that's why the bench is taking the most of my volume right now. We have 50% of my training days are dedicated purely towards bench accessories and, and max benching. Everything else is towards squat, deadlift, back, all of that. Because this is the highest priority. My bench is lagging the most, right? And and it's it's pretty pretty apparent that it is. In a 335 bench right now that's the best I've hit on camera I'll own it I could probably do more at this point but not a lot more with a 552 squat raw raw with nothing but a belt and a pair of shorts on 605 deadlift which I held for several seconds at the top my deadlift will probably keep climbing pretty quick as long as my grip stays on point uh, bench is going to have to take a higher priority. We've got to get that bench past 350. Like, at the very least. At the very least. Because it's going to be ridiculous. If I get my deadlift to 650 and my bench isn't past 350, like that's getting ludicrous. So so it has to take a priority. So my bench is the highest priority right now. Has to be. But we're putting in the work and we're doing all this volume for all these different support muscles, all the muscles that could be involved. 
picking really, really good supplemental work, doing the max work, but a lot of it, again, building my grip and forearms up. Uh, the newer wraps, I think, will help as I do that. It'll help with my basically my bar path and leverages. Make better use of the muscle I'm building. But yeah, moving forward. Um, and like I said on these, even though I kept the same weight, more reps. And as I said before, these seems to be hitting the sweet spot. It's lighting up my side delts. And to some extent my rear delts. On some of these, once I get a couple sets deep, I start feeling a little bit of rear delt pump when I'm done. Uh, again, all this volume for these volume resistant muscles. And that's something I've, I've said before. My delts seem to be extremely volume resistant. There's experts like Dr. Mike saying everyone's delts are. Mine seem to be more so than average. They don't grow easily. But as I've said before, I haven't really done huge amounts of volume for them until now. And I think this will hit the sweet spot. You know, especially hitting a couple different rep ranges. Uh, I think it'll happen. I mean, it's not going to happen overnight. People are going to be like, you've been doing this for weeks. Yeah, guys, it's, it's not going to happen in weeks. It, we're, we're talking months. Like, I literally might have to do this for four months before we see any, any noticeable change. It could take that long. Now, if you see a change really quick, that would be indicative of certain things, wouldn't it? If I keep doing this and all of a sudden two weeks from now my delts have grown an inch, You know what I mean, guys? It doesn't work that way. So it's going to take months. It's going to take months. And I'll put it in. I'm going to be consistent. Because it's got to happen. While we work on continuing with good shoulder health on all of our training. Then I did my band press downs. Five sets of the band press downs to failure. Again, builds tendons. We need that tendon strength. We're getting an over speed eccentric and a stretch reflex on most of these. My God, do they light my triceps up. And I feel all three heads, right? So at least we know nothing's being neglected. That's the nonsense, though, where you see guys there, they want to post all these studies. Oh, this hits this head, this hits this head. It's like, how ludicrous. Why can't you do really heavy presses for your triceps and then pick something that's ultra efficient? I mean, think about the biomechanics involved with this. Because of the movement of the shoulder we're getting the long head we get an over speed eccentric and a stretch reflex on the same exercise and hit all three heads okay how much less equipment does this take than trying to figure out how to do all three or four different tricep exercises people do people might want to think about that something like a band press down like this gives you every training response you would want, at least for higher reps. Obviously, it's not giving you the, the deep mechanical tension. You are getting eccentric overload because of the overspeed eccentrics. And you're getting that overspeed eccentric in the lateral and medial heads. Okay, the stretch reflex involved in it up at the top because of the shoulder movement hits the long head. But it's hard for evidence-informed practitioners to make money telling you, oh, you could do something like this. Oh, and it'll help with elbow tendonitis. Well, he needs a couple sets of bands. Yeah, that's not good for business, is it? No, it's not. Not good for business at all. But had a good workout. Uh, every All the supplemental work, all the stuff went great. Didn't bench as heavy as I would have liked, but I'm very, very fatigued at this point. And we're going to keep working on it, keep moving forward like we have on the other lifts. Stay focused. So I hope it has been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.